Good to be alive. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Yeah. Hey, you know, being a chef, right, means uh, working a lot of nights, most weekends. <laughs> but I got to tell you, when a free Sunday rolls around, I'm ready to relax, spend time with the family, and cook up some of their favorite Sunday dinners. That's what I'm going to share with you tonight. Oh, yeah. From smothered pork chops to ice cream sandwiches. See, everyone in my house has, like, a favorite dish. I'll let you guess who asked for the pork chops. <laughs> Speaking about special folks, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. We're going to do that special Sunday dinner thing tonight. Yeah, we need it. I'm really excited it. about it. Yes. All right. Sunday dinners. That's what we're going to do family style tonight on Emerald Live. Unbelievable. He did it. He did it. He did it. We're All proud right. of Hank. He's uh, Hank proud. is back in the house, you know. Great. It's a little inside joke, folks. Hey, you want to know really and truly what's on the menu tonight? Yeah. Okay. As I said, some of my favorite Sunday dinners for the family. Starting with smothered pork chops. And then I'm going to show you how to make a simple braised cabbage. Fantastic. Pan-roasted salmon with lentils. Simple, yummy. Penne alla vodka that we're going to do as a casserole. Oh, yeah. And then EJ's first ice cream sandwich. We're going to show you that, too. Yes, indeed. All right. Really and truly, I make this dish at least once a week. Smothered pork chops. Let me share it with you. Get pork chops. They don't have to be the fancy ones because you're going to smother them. Going to season them. Then we're going to brown them. Now, when they're brown in the oil, how much oil? Maybe a, maybe a quarter of a cup. So you want to brown the chops on both sides. Once that happens, we're going to take them out of the pan. So the chops, both sides, out of the pan. Now, see the oil? <laughs> Everything all right over here, Jay? <laughs> Is that your stomach growling? Goodness. Keep hearing these noises, you know what I mean, Doc? It's Jay, I'm sure. And uh, I got to get him a bag of chips or something. <laughs> All right, so now to the oil. What we're going to do is we're going to add flour. And to that flour, folks, not too thick, making a roux, scraping down the bottom. All those yummies are down there. And you want to cook this so that it's sort of peanut butter color. You with me there? All right. That's going to take about 10 minutes. It looks like this. See? Nice peanut butter color. The key with the roux, and I say this and I say it and I say it, the mistake that people make, they got the fire on too high. You got to, like, have it on that medium, medium high. You can't cook it too fast. You got to keep stirring it or it's going to burn. So once it gets to be peanut butter color, next thing we do, a couple of nice onions sliced, we're going to put some onions in there. Now we can turn the heat up. A couple of bay leaves. Going to start cooking the onions in here. Oh, yes. A little salt. 
some pepper. Now we're gonna cook the onions for about six to eight minutes. They're gonna get nice and wilty. Once the onions get nice and wilty, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some stock, chicken broth, beef broth. We're gonna add it in there, you know, like one of those containers in there, and also a little water. Gonna bring it up to a boil, we're gonna let it simmer. That's gonna be our gravy, okay? When we come back, I'm gonna show you what it looks like because the pork chops then go in there and wait till you see what else. Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Band. Welcome back, folks. Emma Lagasse here cooking Sunday dinner. Some of my favorite Sunday dinners. All right, so you all with me, right? Yeah. Now the onions, six or eight minutes in the roux, bay leaves. I added a little garlic, stir, stir, stir. Now, now we're going to make sort of the sauce, the gravy, if you will. A little water. And a little stock, chicken broth. Oh, yeah, man. Now... Gonna stir in the roux. When it comes to a boil, we'll know how thick it is. Because when you're working with a little thickener here, that's what happens. All thickening agents, it's gotta come to a boil, then you'll know how thick it is. If it's too thick, we'll add a little bit more stock or water. If it's uh, too thin, huh, punt. <laughs> All right, so now, once the roux gets worked in here, got that heat going on. The brown golden color is going to come out a little bit more. Now we can season this a little bit more. Salt, re-season it, a little pepper, a little essence maybe. All right, so it's looking good. It's just about boiling. So now I know this is like the perfect thickness. I don't want to get it too thick because it's going to cook for a while. All right, it's going to evaporate, it's going to cook. So, here's the next step. Once it comes to a boil, we put the pork chops back in here. Oh, yeah, babe. This is a real show here. So we put the pork chops in here. And then what we're going to do now is you cover this. Once it comes up, we cover this. Oh, look, happy. Now, you're going to adjust the heat once it comes up to a boil. Now we're going to turn the heat down to about medium, medium low. We're going to let this simmer like this, covered, for about 45 minutes. Boy, you want to talk about yummy. So, 45 minutes goes by. This is what it looks like. You see that? Huh. Fancy. Oh, fancy, Doc. Don't go in there breaking all the pork chops up. Now what we want to do is we want to go to the next step. We want to turn the heat down because it's simmering quite a bit now. You see I stirred the bottom. We don't want to make sure it's sticking. Now the next part of this dish, you take smoked sausage or andouille sausage or kibasi sausage or whatever you sausage have <laughs> and you cut it in pieces and you put the sausage in here. Okay? Then you take one or two potatoes, you peel it, you dice it. Okay? You put the potato in here. Okay? Oh, yeah. Oh. Then, got to re-season this, because the potatoes are not seasoned. Oh. Now, you cover it. And you're going to let this simmer for about 15 minutes, just until the potatoes are cooked. The potatoes let out some starch, okay? Gets a little bit more body, the sausage flavor in there with the pork chops. Now, you can either serve this with rice, 
and or one of the things I love to serve with this is just a simple braised cabbage. So here's how I do that. I render down some bacon like I have right here just until it's crispy. Then I add some onions. The reason for that is if I added the onions first, then the bacon, the bacon wouldn't get crispy because the water and the onions. So I add a couple of bay leaves, some cayenne pepper, some salt, probably going to need a little bit more salt. <laughs> then once the onions and the bacon cook a little bit, Pork chops are simmering. Once that cooks for about four or five minutes, then I get a nice head of cabbage that I shred it up. I put the cabbage in here. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's like spinach, you know, or collard greens. You start, you got like a mound of them. Then as soon as you get it in there and it starts cooking and they start wilting, it shrinks down. So now... The cabbage is in there. Let me give you another secret. One beer. Oh, yeah, babe. One beer. One beer, a little salt, more fresh pepper. Then we cover it gonna start getting happy in there. It's gonna start releasing its juices. <laughs> getting all happy like the pork chops. Look at how happy they're looking right there. You see that? When we come back, it's gonna be one old happy fest. Stay with us. Back here. <laughs> Gassi here cooking a little Sunday dinner, or at least uh, what I'd be cooking in my house here. We got braised cabbage on the stove right now. About 45 minutes, you braise that in that, one, that beer, then come back and readjust the seasoning. It's perfect. Got some rice on the stove, pork chops. Oh, yeah, babe. Just about done. Those taters are just mm 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 mm. Mm mm mm. <laughs> now, before I uh, show you how to dish it up, I'm going to show you another one of my Sunday dishes. It's an option here if you want to use bacon or not. If you do, you uh, render it down. When it gets crispy like that, I add onions, celery, carrots. Cook this down a little bit. And then what we're going to do is... Keep in mind that we have the bacon in there has got, you know, it's been cured. It's got a little salt, so we don't have to go crazy with that right now. But a little bit, the vegetables aren't. <laughs> and then some pepper. And I got this on, like, medium heat. Now, once that cooks, bay leaf. Thyme, optional. Stems, no stems, optional. You don't want the stems, you just strip the thyme leaves off, put them in there, be done with it. Now, when the vegetables cook about four or five minutes, oh, it's getting happy already. What happens now, I add a little garlic in here, and then I add some lentils. Oh, yeah. The little guy loves them lentils. So what I do is when I add the lentils in here, I just let them sort of coat a little bit of the oil that's in here. And then what I do, chicken broth. Simple, fast, let them cook. Come up to a boil, we're going to adjust the heat, let them down. 
Let's go talk about, before we talk about what we're going to serve with those lentils, let's, uh, let me show you how uh, we dish up these pork chops. Now, first thing, I start with a little rice. Woo! <laughs> there ain't been no cool handle. <laughs> so I start with a little rice, because this is like one of those rice dishes. At least for me. Okay? I know, I'm saving you some. This is my portion. And then, we come on over. I'm going to turn the heat off that. We come over for the pork chop and sausage thing. You see how they're just falling, like, right off the bone? Right? So we put a few pork chops on here. Come on, baby. See how they just fall off? <laughs> Meanwhile, the band over there is going wild. <laughs> now, what I want to do, folks, I want to eliminate the bay leaf. You don't really want to eat that. It's kind of not a good digesting kind of thing. <laughs> Little sausage. Okay. Some of that gravy. Oh. Some more. Oh, yeah. Another bay leaf. And then, how I like to finish it, at least at my house, we go in for some of this cabbage. I kind of just put a little bit like that. A little bit like that. What, you want to come yeah. over and have a little Sunday dinner, yeah. huh? A little bit like that. And that's probably uh, one of my favorite dishes right here, folks. Smothered pork chops with cabbage, okay? I wish you could smell this. Absolutely. I wish you could smell this. If you were here, you'd want to keep your nose somewhere around over here. <laughs> You know, and kind of do this a few times. Inhale, exhale. Oh, I'm feeling like Jack LaLanne. <laughs> All right. Now, with the lentils, I like the oiliness, the lentils, the earthiness of the lentils. I like the oiliness of salmon. Believe it or not, on that WWW Food Network, psh, go over to the Emerald page, you won't even believe how many requests we get for salmon. So... What we're going to do is simply just season it. This is a wild king salmon. We're going to season it with salt and pepper. We're going to take good olive oil in a skillet. We're going to adjust that heat a little bit. Get a little oil in that nonstick pan. And then when you're ready, what we're going to do is we're going to start adding the fillets of salmon. And believe it or not, they cook so fast. It's like shrimp. they got a built-in thermometer, these guys. Okay? So we got lentils. We got salmon. When we come back, I'll show you how to put it together. Stick around. Doc Gibbs in the end of that band. <laughs> If you just join us, shame on you. I remember Lagasse, we're making Sunday dinner, at least sun, Sunday dinner in my house. We just finished uh, smothered pork chops with braised cabbage served over rice. Jump in there, babe. <laughs> Jump right in there. And lentils, about 40, 45 minutes. Most people overcook the lentils. They just keep adding liquid, letting them go, letting them go, letting them go, and all of a sudden, they got lentil soup. <laughs> 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 huh? 
Come on. So, the salmon, same thing. Ah, well done. What's the point? Buy it in a can. <laughs> you know, nice, medium, rare, medium. Delicious. It shouldn't have any smell. It should have a nice sheen to it, nice color. Get to know your fishmonger. Very important. Eat more fish. That's the dish. <laughs> All right. I'm taking the salmon off because it's like medium right now. Okay. Medium. Mm. And the lentils. Oh, baby. Now, before I use my family as guinea pigs, you got to taste it to see if you got to re-season these things. I mean, I am still re-seasoning them, and I've made this I don't know how many times. So, that's when your brain's going to tell you. Perfect. <laughs> or it's going to say to you, no, oh, I need a little bit more salt. I want some more pepper. See, that would be re-season. That's the problem. People don't season. They wait to the end. When they should be re-seasoning, that's when they season, and it's too late. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> All right. So for me, how I like to serve this, and I'll just do an individual portion. I just like to take some lentils and a wonderful piece of salmon that's how simple it is folks all right you want to do a little garnish you know you could put a little essence you want to do a little garnish you could put a little bit of fresh parsley maybe simple sometimes it all depends if you want to use the really good olive oil that you have, that extra V stuff, you know, you may want to just put a little bit, a few drizzles like that of it. But if it's really super fresh, you don't need munch. You don't need lemon. You don't need lime. Sometimes in the summer, if I do this dish, I'll just chop a tomato and an onion up, a little olive oil, salt, and pepper, and I'll put that on top of that. Delicious. There you have it, a little salmon with lentils, okay? <laughs> During the commercial break, during the commercial break, I took hot Italian sausage, sweet Italian sausage, and I just kind of went, you know, taking it out of the casing thing. You don't have to do that. Sometimes I don't do that. When I have time, I take it out there, olive oil, get it hot, and I stop browning the sweet and the hot Italian, Italian sausage. If it breaks up in pieces, great. If it doesn't, great. Why stress out? It's Sunday dinner. <laughs> now, the great thing about this is that you could make this on Saturday. Let it chill. And then Sunday, let it get room temperature and pop it in the oven as a casserole. Or if you want to have it that day, you don't have to do the casserole thing. And what you could do is serve it up. Here's how we cook it up. Once the sausage gets brown, I add a lot of sweet onions in here. A lot of times what I'll do too, folks, I cook with red onions or shallots or shallots. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Getting fancy. But red onions have a lot of wonderful flavor, especially the small ones. For some reason, everybody just thinks that you're there, there for salads, you know, only salads. I don't know where, you, where we got that from. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so if you seem like you don't have enough olive oil in there to absorb, you can always add a little bit more. Once the onions cook about three or four minutes, and they start getting sweet a little bit, the next thing I do is I add some garlic in here. And one of them big cans of the tomatoes, and I like them whole. I like to go in there and, mmm. <laughs> so now we're going to add that in here. 
Now, I like fresh basil. And there's an art to fresh basil. All right. So this now, let's add the basil, first of all. Probably want to add a little bit of water, too. Let's, let's do that action first. Just a little bit of H2O. Sort of wash down that can of the tomato. Getting back to fresh basil. I like when you're using fresh basil to add it now, not in the beginning. And as soon as you chop it like that, that's when it just gets all nice and happy and the flavors go wild. So we add the basil in here now. And then for me, one of the things, this is optional. This is penne, or this is a sauce, or a ragu. So put whatever pasta you want in right now. I'm actually going to have penne. Okay, so the water's to boil. I add the dry penne in there. We're going to start cooking that. One of the things that I think gives this dish a nice taste is a little vodka. Yeah. Optional, of course. But look, you just sort of... Add a little bit of this for the flavor, okay? It's going to evaporate, but it's the flavor, that grain flavor that we're going to get in here. So the pasta's cooking. That's going to start simmering. When we come back, I'll show you how to put it together. Stay with us. Good evening. Welcome back. Emma Lagasse here. Remember me? <laughs> hey, um, you know, he busted me up in a commercial break here because, you know, the, the pasta, you know, you see it, right? I mean, we're really cooking on this show, right? I think we're flopping guinea hens over here or something, you know? <laughs> it's not, they're not done. It's not perfection. So I got to wait. I got to wait, Jay. All right, the sauce is simmering, getting real nice and happy. Now, to that, what I'm going to do is add a little bit of cream to this. It's totally optional. Totally, totally optional. Not in my house, but I'm going to fold this over now. I've got the heat down. How's the salmon? Incredible. It's all right, the lentils? Yeah. Delicious. Simple, right? Yeah. Perfect. You saw it, right here. <laughs> Emmanuel Live. I mean, Ember Live. <laughs> Mixed up. It's okay. <laughs> now, do you think we're dubbed in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> I always wondered about that. <laughs> do, you, do you have any idea? I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm asking a very serious... Uh, it, it might be a little difficult. Really? Yeah. Because of my voice, or? The, yeah, the, and okay. the jokes. The jokes. And the jokes. <laughs> and the jokes. All right. What jokes? Uh, well, hey, you know what they call a deer? Uh -oh. With a. No, I don't call it. That. <laughs> All right, so. I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> we got to ask Rochelle Brown. I think she remembers it. There's a three-tiered deer joke thing there. Oh, three -tier. Something, what do you call it? Uh, forget it. <laughs> I'm going back to the pasta here. All right. All right, let's see if the pasta's ready. If not, we're going to punt. Just kidding. <laughs> now, you want to have this pasta a little bit al dente because I'm going to make it into the casserole. I'm not going to just serve it. Oh, yeah, babe. Minutes away. <laughs> While that's happening, we're going over to the cookie land. All right? I'm going to make the cookie dough first. First thing we want to do is we want to cream butter and sugar. 
Okay? That's the first thing we want to do. We're going to cream butter and sugar. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to put this together. So let's bring this down. And let's start creaming. Oh. Houston, we have liftoff. Yes. We are creaming. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Creaming is going on. And more creaming. All right, while this is creaming, that means the butter gets mixed with the sugar. See, there's a problem here. I got to stop it. There's a big problem happening. See, a lot of times when your butter is not... <laughs> Sometimes when your butter is just a little too cold, take a look. Now, that's not creaming. <laughs> that is stuck. <laughs> so you want to knock this butter down. And then, back in, creaming. <laughs> Cooperate, please. <laughs> now, we're going to add the brown sugar to this. Okay? Creaming is now going on again. I will get that butter off one way or another. Stand back, ma'am. Something is about ready to happen. Creaming. Oh, it's happening now. Now we're gonna add the vanilla. And the egg. We're gonna slow it down. All right, let that happen over here. The pasta's definitely ready by now. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to take the pasta, careful here, steam, right? Big mistake that people make, cooking pasta, the sauce, you know? They don't let it drain enough. They spend about six hours on Sunday making a beautiful sauce. They put the pasta in, they rush it, they don't drain it, they ruin the sauce. Holy mackerel. So drain it good. Once it's drained, here's what I do. I put it in the bowl. Oh, yeah, babe. Easy. Easy. All right. Now, I take a little olive oil. Mm -hmm. I take some salt. Mm -hmm. Pepper. And then, toss it. Now, shh, my secret. You take the sausage mixture in the bowl. Wait! Wait! You're gonna toss it, then to it. You're gonna make it happier. Parmesan cheese. Wait! Ricotta cheese. Wait! You're gonna mix it, getting happy. Happy! Happy! Yeah. Happy! Yeah. Happy! Yeah. Okay. You put it in your casserole. And then... Are you happy? Yeah. No! <laughs> Mozzarella cheese! Three hundred and seventy-five degrees. We put it in the oven. When we come back, another notch.
Oh, we've been making Sunday dinner. Oh, ho, ho, ho. so the option again, folks, you could have just tossed it like we were doing, the sauce, the ricotta, the cheese, and you could have just served it hot like that. Earlier, I was telling you that you could do this on Saturday, let it cool, cover it, refrigerate it. Then on Sunday, dinner, let it get room temperature, 375, and you're going to uh, cook that until it's nice and bubbly, golden brown and bubbly, and bubbly and happy and bubbly <laughs> and bubbly. Basically about an hour, 45 minutes. This is what it looks like when it's done. The mozzarella melts, and it is bubbly. Look at that. All right, now. How we serve this. Nice crusty bread, slightly warm. You can use your knife with the teeth on it that you don't really know what it's for, <laughs> but you know it's sharp. Or you could use this one. It's a beautiful thing. Depending on the size of the bread. But that's why it's serrated. See? Crusty bread like this. Okay? Small one. Big one. Because for me, when it's dinner time, you're just going to go in for the casserole thing like this. Flip that thing over like that. Flip that right over here like that. Little crusty bread. Some fresh parsley or whatever. And there you have it, folks. Penne alla vodka. Ah. Wade, have we shot this? Do we have a shot of this? Great. Wow. There you go. Make some friends. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, oh, wait. EJ's ice cream sandwich. All right, so we got the cream thing done. Now, see it? It's all creamed. We're going to take the dry ingredients now. Flour, baking powder, salt, baking soda. Sift it. Why? Because we're aerating it. Now, it's aerated. The dry ingredients go in here. Back down. I promise I won't get you. <laughs> nice and slow and easy and work the flour in there. Okay? This makes the cookie dough. This makes the cookie dough. When it gets all together, we're going to scrape it down and then you can make them the size that you want. You'll see here in just a second. It's coming together. We'll scrape it down. Then we got the cookie dough. So, how big do you want them? For this particular thing, I use... I, I take it out, I make a log, I cut them about this big. They make nice cookies. Put them on the sheet pan. 350, 360, about 15 to 18 minutes. EJ likes uh, M&M's, so I put a few M&M's in them like this. Press them in there. You know, you don't have to do M&M's. You could do sprinkles. Oh, whatever sprinkles you like. <laughs> when they bake, they come out. You let them cool on a baking rack like this. Oh, yeah, they're going to spread out like that. Now, to kick it up a notch, we go in. Whatever kind of favorite ice cream you like. This happens to be chocolate. So what you do, you get the chocolate ice cream. Put one right like that. Take another cookie. Don't break it. Just slightly push like this. Slow, eat, slight, oh, ah, eat, oh, slightly. <laughs> then when you do that, the kids love this. 
Just when you get it together like this. Mmm. Ooh. E, sometimes when I really, like, I'm out of my mind, which is often, I, like, dip them in chocolate. Then I put them back in the freezer. Oh, yes, indeed. In the freezer. See, if you want to serve them like that, you can serve them like this. But the thing is, you can also do it ahead of time. Sometimes I do them stacked layers. What do you mean by that? I do the double-decker thing. See? And it's nice and frozen, and you take them out. There you have it. A little ice cream sandwich. Hey, I'm Emerald Lagasse. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight on Sunday dinner.